Hi, my name is Rob Walkety. I'm a beekeeper here in Richmond, Virginia. I've been keeping bees for about 18 or 19 years. Um, I want to irritate some people right off. I'm a treatment-free beekeeper. I have not bought chemicals in 18 years. The first year I treated because they said you had to, and then I lost my stuff and I didn't have enough money to buy more, and so I never treated after that. And um, I've been fine. So a lot of you guys are gonna turn me off now, so that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I do a lot of different types of beekeeping. I, um, I've got top bar hives, laying straws. I've got eight frame laying straw, 10 frame laying straws. Um, I've built queen castles. Uh, I'm hoping maybe this year I'll figure out how to bank queens over the winter. Um, want to try that one, build a queen bank and, and see if I can keep one a bank alive. Um, I've done pollination. I do a lot of cutouts. I've done cutouts, trap outs, uh, live swarm pickups, and then I do a lot of traps. So I've got probably about 25 traps that I put up and around the city. Um, usually people I've done a cutout for, I'll put a trap up because I know for guarantee there's going to be a hive somewhere around there. Um, this year's been fantastic. Um, I think 24 traps. Caught 15 hives, uh, actually probably 17, except two of them, I couldn't get out there to pick them up. The queen got confused, she was underneath the box and then they left. So it would have been 17 if I had gotten out there. I still have like maybe 10 out there um, that I haven't checked on. Uh, so I could have another couple of hives out there. It would be fantastic if I had a 100% hit rate. Um, I've got at least a 300% hit rate on three locations, so three hives or three swarms of that same and none of these are like near commercial apiaries or anything like this. This is just hives in the city. Um, definitely some of them. Early on, I saw a lot of straight line Italians, uh, what looked like Italians um, in the traps. But then um, happily, I found several that had a mix of all kinds of colors. So I wanted to build a steam wax extractor. I have tried using the solar extractors. Um, I've tried, you know, a Langstroth with a glass, double layer glass, paint all black inside, try to follow the sun. It got everything really hot and soft and squishy, um, but not a lot of wax came out. And I think that the biggest problem with that is number one, uh, you have to choose a really hot day in the middle of the summer, and you do get a little bit of a bleaching effect. But my issue with the solar extractors is that it's gotta be during the summer and uh, there's not a carrier. So my issue is that there's a, it seems to be a lot of wax, even if it got super, super hot, uh, you'd have to have more wax to push the wax that's already in the comb out. So the, what the steam extractor does is it actually provides a carrier. So the water is the carrier to help flush the wax out. If you tried to do it in a solar extractor, you really couldn't do it. You'd have to add like a misting generator to try to push it through. And I don't think that would work. So I would say that you know, if you really wanted that white wax, uh, extract it all and run it out in a big thin sheet and then stick it out in the, the sun to, to fade. But I wanted to build a wax extractor. This one is based off of uh, one I saw in, um, it's for sale in England for the WBC Hive. Um, there really aren't that many small scale uh, steam extractors available in the rich, in the US. So I, some of you guys are hopefully writing that down so you can start selling it on Amazon or making the plans for what I just did, depending on how well this goes. But I didn't see that many in the U.S. Um, beautiful one uh, in England, but you got to have the WBC dimensions for that to work. And they built it very similar to this. So it's a metal pan that slides or tilts so it's shallow up here, it's deep down here, so that when the wax comes down, it actually goes in this pan and everything flows um, everything points to the, the front. So it's really kind of difficult to get this um, just the right shape. Um, I've already done it. This is the second version. The, the first version is actually underneath this one and it got all ripped up because the aluminum is kind of thin. Um, what I did here with the tape is it's still ripped a little bit because it's so thin and the metal fatigues when you're bending it and sometimes it can rip. So this is uh, the commercial required HVAC two-part um, tape for ductwork. You can get this at Lowe's, Lowe's and Home Depot in the insulation area. Um, so this is Peel and Stick Sure Tape is the, the brand name on this one. It is aluminum tape, but it's also held on by adhesive. I don't know if the steam is going to cause it to delaminate. So if it does delaminate, um, 
there's another pan underneath this one and then there's a wood underneath that so this whole thing could fill up with like four pounds of wax after that it would definitely run out so it would it would uh would definitely run out the front so i'll lose like three or four pounds of wax and then i'll be good for the rest of my life so uh, we've got the tape here sealing everything and this was just kind of stabilize it and hold it into place The metal actually does come up the sides and over the top So even if this all the tape was gone, it's actually stapled here. So this pan really wouldn't move and then the white stuff is actually uh, just a roll of um, Gasket material like window gasket you can get that at Lowe's and Home Depot in the, the window sealant and door sealer areas it comes in a roll um, this is a little bit more pricey because I was going to use it on rebuilding one of my BVACs, um, but I haven't gotten around to that, so um, I'll just have a leaky BVAC, but maybe a better uh, steam uh, wax extractor. All right, so that's the base of the steam extractor. Next thing that goes in here, um, usually when you're filtering out wax, you got to go through multiple processes. I wanted to see if I could save myself a little bit of time. Uh, again, using that wax as a, uh, the, sorry, the steam as a carrier, you're gonna get more wax if you can actually run it through this process. So I know that there's some guys that'll run it through this and then run it through again. Uh, one guy has a pretty neat process where he runs it through a uh, pillowcase. I like that one a lot. I just wanted to save myself a little bit of time. Um, so what I did was I built these screen frames. And so what goes on the bottom, which is the last step of filtration, is a 90, threads per inch uh, cheesecloth. So that's gonna go on the bottom. Next one up from that is the 1 8 inch uh, B, um, B hardware cloth that we use for a lot of times for our um, screen bottom boards, things like that. And then finally the 1 quarter inch galvanized screen. And this was used for like pollen traps and uh, some other, I think some people have tried it for a queen excluder. I don't know that I'd recommend that. Um, it's just too, it's not uniform enough to, to guarantee it. Anyway, three uh, three screens, three levels of filtration: um, uh, high, medium, and fine, or coarse, medium, fine. Um, those are sitting on top of this this little box, and you can see they they're all the same size, and they fit right on top of there. Next step is the Langstroth deep. So you can use any old Langstroth box you got. Um, it doesn't matter. You can build an eight frame or a ten frame. Um, doesn't matter because you're actually wax or steaming the wax off of the frames, not off of um, out of the box. Even though there, I've got a little bit of you know breech comb in there, um, but this is actually going to take care of the frames themselves. And um, so, if you got all eight frame and you want to use an extra eight frame box, you can do that. If you got an old ten frame, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll just be able to do 10, 10 frames instead of eight. Um, sometimes people just throw in other junk frames. Uh, I was. At some point, I'll probably make a little basket here for just random comb that's not on here and just kind of drop the basket in and pile all the comb so um, it gets it up into the, the body of this a little bit. One thing I want to mention, I do um, top bar hives and Langstroth hives, and I want to make a request in this video. You'll see these two are exactly the same length. They're 19 inches long. That's a Langstroth frame here at the top and this one is my top bar frame and if you look they are the exact same length that means that I can stick my Langstroth uh, frame in a Langstroth box and I can take my top bar frame and stick it in my Langstroth box. This is critically important um, as a public service announcement please if you're going to build a top bar hive make it 19 inch bars because if you call me and, and you want me to give you a top bar nuke, which I've done plenty of times, I come out to your hive and it's either too short or too long. It is really hard to take this thing full of bees and try to cut uh, ends off of it so it'll fit in your top bar. Uh, same thing if it's too long. Uh, we can put screws in the end, but it, it, it's a mess. If everybody would adopt the 19 inch long top bar in the US, I know Phil Chandler in the UK has got a different because he's WBC. But in the U.S., please adopt the 19-inch long top bar bar. That way we can all work together. If your sides are a different dimension, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the standard 23 or whatever it is for the dimensions on, on the angles here. I can, I've taken a pair of scissors and, and trimmed. That's not a problem. In fact, this one, um, 
obviously need to be trimmed to, to meet that trapezoid that's in my top bar. The reason this one looks like this is my top bar seem to survive the winter a lot better than my Langstroth. I have really good survival rates, but it seems like no matter what happens, my top bars almost never die in the winter, um, which frustrates me a little bit because um, they, um, I really use my top bars as queen banks um, or queen reserves. And uh, they, they just make it through the winter. It's super easy for them. If I pull this out and put it in a queenless hive, there's almost always eggs at the bottom for them to easily make a queen cell that looks right. Um, I usually uh, can put three or four spacers in between those to force them to, to swarm or build swarm cells. And then I'll grab the swarm cells and make nukes out of those. I'm really happy. I like using swarm cells for, nu for nukes just because the, the hive was planning on making that queen. It wasn't an emergency situation. So from day one, she was always intended to be fed well to turn into a queen. Anyway, sidebar, please make them 19. That way we can all work together. Uh, and I can take a top bar that's got a bunch of queen cells on it. If I have to do an emergency queen in my Langstroth, which is maybe what happened here, like the queen failed or I pinched her because she sucked or something, I don't know. Um, this one will have queen cells on it. I can just take it, stick it in my, my Langstroth. They usually won't attach the sides. You can see there's plenty of space here. Boom, I've got a queen in my Langstroth and I got it from a top bar. A little harder to go the other way. Um, maybe I'll do an education video on how to, to incorporate a Langstroth nuke in a top bar someday. Anyway, that is this. Last step is uh, the lid. Um, the lid itself is, uh, it's a plywood with a one inch thick frame. This allows me to, to have extremely flat lids um, also, because it's sealed, the aluminum face goes down towards the inside of the box. This actually protects the plywood uh, from getting damp and delaminating or warping. So this means that I'm going to have always a very flat, rigid top. And if I want to, I can run ratchet straps over this to tighten everything down. I still don't know if, uh, if I'm going to have steam leaking from the sides, but overall, I think that um, we'll end up with a pretty good product. Uh, lastly. This is the hose for the steam extractor. So the steam generator is, uh, this one's either an Erlex or a Wagner um, wallpaper steamer. Uh, I could have used the little fitting there, but I still need to take out the wallpaper that's in my mom's spare bedroom. So I need to save that. So I just drilled a hole. We'll stick this in the top and you can seal that hole any number of ways. You can use, um, you can use caulk, spray foam, uh, you know, shove a piece of rubber in there. Um, I think one of the things I may end up doing is since I need to reuse this a couple of times is, uh, electrician's putty. It's a big block. It's a gray block of, you know, putty type stuff that you can get in the electrician's aisle. Uh, it's like butyl tape and you can just mound that around that and it provides an airtight seal. Um, so I may do that in the future. We'll see how much steam escapes from the top. And whether or not I can find something, I might grab a foam paintbrush and just shove the foam in there to kind of keep some of that steam in there. So this goes in the top. Um, just a note about the steamers. I mean, you can make your own. You can probably make a steamer out of a metal tank or a pressure cooker or a neti pot. I'm sorry. <laughs> a uh, Instapot. Um, I just felt like, you know, this is a product that's actually made to make steam. Um, they're on Craigslist all the time. They sell new for around 60 bucks. You can almost always buy them off Craigslist for 20 or 25. And then boom, you've got this steam generator that's, you know, UL Underwriter Laboratory approved. You just plug it in and uh, produces steam and you unplug it and you're done. So um, hopefully this part helps.